now I search high and low for the best diagrams I can out there to try and explain this concept um, something that is very very important is subnets which we talked about however it's the fact that and it's it comes up a lot in the questions in the exam about the difference between public and private so try and commit this to memory I probably should have a, a little sticker here to remember if a subnet's traffic is routed to an internet gateway the subnet is known as a public subnet so that's the basic idea of why public why a subnet is called a public subnet the fact that it has let's have a look at this slide here a connection to the internet straight out straight out there through the internet gateway and to Amazon S3 EC2 or wherever you want now if a subnet doesn't have a route to the internet gateway the subnet is known as a private subnet again back to this drawing you can see a private subnet doesn't have a connection out to the internet however it doesn't mean that you can't make a connection out there and again we will discuss this a little later on when we talk about NATs but a uh, network uh, translation is needed to go from private subnet out to a public subnet oh, sorry excuse me out to the internet from the private again try and commit this to memory because as you'll see the next question it's a long well that's sort of a similar line so every now and again during the course I'm going to pop a question up after I've explained a concept and I've carefully chosen these questions as I think they're very very similar to the ones that you may get on the exam so let's read through this one you have set up a default VPC network and you now need to associate a public IP address to that network so as to enable access to it from the outside world and a private IP for internal use which of the following statements is true in relation to these IP addresses specifically when setting up a VPC with default settings do you need to manually assign both a private and a public IP do you a private IP is assigned by default and you need to manually assign a public or is a public assigned by default and you need to manually assign a private or do the private IP address and the public IP address get assigned by default um, the answer to that if you didn't already know it is the last one that they're both assigned by default and there's the answer uh, the reason is I I mean it's just basically these are the things when you set up a VPC the things that happen um, a default subnet in each availability zone and internet gateways created by default mount route table for your default VPC default security group uh, we will go into more detail about these later on route tables and security groups um, default NACL um, default DHCP options and finally the thing that gets assigned by default is a private IP address and a public IP address which is the answer to our question again oh, okay I said I should have put a remember on, on the last slide but um, it seems like I put it here which is a pretty good place so when you see this little remember it means remember it try and commit it to memory and understand it because when I have the remember post-it note it means a similar question might pop up in the exam 